actually closed on this piece of property with some buddies just a week and a half ago and it's a game changer for me. The second buck I have is this uh, turkey foot tin. He's just a really nice mainframe tin. He's got some kickers off that right G2. My stand's gonna be right there at the pinch. I'm gonna predict that I'm gonna, you know, shoot one of my bucks out of this tree here. Well, it's about 5.45. And that's the turkey foot den. Thursday, October 15th. I got out of work today about 3.30 and Chase and I were able to slip in on my home farm and get set up by about four o'clock. It's pretty windy, we've got 20 mile an hour winds but they're supposed to die down here. This cold front hit last night and this morning. Pressure's above 30, we've got a northwest wind. It's about 50 degrees with the wind chill, it's upper 40s. Yesterday it was 76, 77 degrees, so big temperature swing. Really awesome weather for October 15th, a great opportunity to catch one of these mature bucks on their feet. We're back in the cherry tree set after turkey foot. Got big and beastie on this side of the tree. And uh, as you guys saw last time, I came in and mowed a little patch of the standing corn a week ago, just to allow me to shoot across. It's about 35, 40 yards across. Turkey foot was actually here, right under this tree on this scrape yesterday morning. And he's been down at the Big and Beastie plot, 200 yards down the hill, a couple mornings in the last week and one evening. I still feel like this is the most likely spot I'll catch up with him, so when I get a chance, I'll have to come sit in this spot. We've got just about a straight west, but it's west-northwest, so we're just cutting off the corner of this Big and Beastie plot. We've got about uh, two hours left of legal shooting. And with this awesome cold front, I imagine the activity will pick up here pretty soon.
different. He's spooked him. <laughs> He's done. Dude, just like that. October 15th. Smoke Mid October. Him. Let's talk about the October law. <laughs> A little cold front action. He's pinned. Oh, it. God. That feels so good. Dude. I couldn't get on over there. I was like, I can't freaking see you. Yeah. He got behind this bush. He worked that scrape. I heard him paw on the ground. You know, then I look and I could see his big neck. I couldn't see his head. I was like, that's a mature buck. Put him in the bino. I was like, that's him. I'm so glad he came up that side. We're gonna get daylight pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 545. And that was a turkey foot 10. I 10 ringed him here at 18 yards out of the tree coming into the corn. I heard him. Uh, brushing up against our pawn and the corn stalks right here. And I turned around, peeked behind the tree, and he's working a scrape. We were able to get him turned around, and he got behind this big bush honeysuckle, and then he just pops out right here at close range. Looked like I made a great shot on him. I don't think he went very far. It just goes to show you what these uh, cold fronts will do here in October. I mean, October 15th, a lot of people talk about the October lull, and it is a time frame where, you know, if it's warm, boy, it's, it can be dead camera slow down and all the activity is nocturnal. The average temperature this time of year is 66 degrees, you know, and the high today is like 52. So this high pressure, cold, got them up on their feet, coming to the corn. I couldn't be more excited. Blood. That good blood. I don't think he could have possibly made it very far. Blood right here. Dude, he's right there. <laughs> he just tumbled down right here in the hole. He didn't make it anywhere. We could have seen him fall from the tree. The tree's just right there. <laughs> yeah. Look at this pig. <laughs> what an awesome deer. Golly. Man. I don't know if I've ever closed a chapter on a target buck this quickly here in Iowa. I have to give all the credit to this cold front. Middle of October, October 15th, 76 degrees yesterday. This cold front hits, cools us down 25, 30 degrees and knew we had to be in a tree. Came up to the cherry tree. Trail cameras and scouting told me that that's where I was gonna catch this buck eventually if I sat there enough. And we've made a handful of sits there and, and here we are sitting behind him. He came in to just 18 yards, made a great shot on him. He didn't make it 50. You gotta love it when a plan comes together and I couldn't be more excited. Well, I just got done with a busy day at the office and me and the guys uh, just got back out to the farm with Turkey Foot. We're gonna get some nice photos taken. And I thought I'd go into a little bit more about how I put a plan together to hunt this deer. I purchased this farm at the beginning of 2019 my home farm. Right away I was excited to have a new property. It was 165 acres, got cameras uh, put out. And he was one of the first good bucks that I had on camera. Had him early in the summer in velvet. And he was here all year long. Um, I had him at four and a half years old. I decided that I wasn't gonna hunt him. And we actually had a couple of encounters with him but they were all after, after camera light and we didn't get any good footage. The neighbor did pass him once in November. We'd all agreed that we'd try to let him get another year on him. And I just watched him on the trail cameras all year and, and learned some of those patterns. And there's really something to be said 
about following or patterning a deer based on your experience the year before. You know, in my experience over time, a lot of these bucks will do very similar things. You know, they're in the same spot in the summer and then they might use the same uh, scrape lines the next year and even be daylight active around the same times of the month. Of course, cold fronts and other factors influence that. This year rolls around, get the cameras back out, same exact spot on the creek bottom in velvet, there he is. And I was looking for these same sorts of patterns. Uh, I was fortunate enough in the off season to buy this additional farm. If you guys follow on the daily blogs, you've, you've heard me talk about that. It's 120 acres that me and a few friends bought that tetrises with my 160. And last year, every time I came up in this field, I'd look at this big cherry tree and say, man, if I could just get in that cherry tree, but it was on the other side of the fence. So the very first thing I did when I bought this uh, additional 120 acres was come put this food plot in and get a stand hung in that cherry tree. And the cameras, you know, started showing me his daylight activity. He was using this area as expected, similar to last year, all through the summer as he shed velvet, continued to really primarily focus on this area made a mock scrape right here under the cherry tree and there he was um, daylight active through september every couple of days and you know i was expecting for a five and a half year old that as the time ticked on he'd become more nocturnal and i wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity to to hunt him early season and then there he was into september the first part of october we had that really good cold front he was daylight active and and then it went quiet i mean we warmed up and uh he was showing up after dark. I took that opportunity to come in and optimize this tree, which I think really helped us succeed in shooting him. I got the tractor in here on October 7th. We mowed down a little 40 acre, uh, sorry, 40 yard patch of the standing corn. And that allowed me to shoot all the way across that little bottleneck in the field. And the deer seemed to really like that area when you knock down the corn, it's easy for them to feed and, and watch for predators, et cetera. And we trimmed out a few uh, shooting lanes. I was actually getting some pictures of Ali, who starting out the year, he was one of the bucks I was most interested in shooting. So I was getting Ali, the drop tine buck, down on the east side of the farm. And so uh, day before yesterday, Chase and I were out here, we were setting up another plot. And I was intending to hunt there on this cold front. We mowed another section of corn, pulled a redneck blind in there. And then my Cuddy Link system showed me that this buck had turned back uh, daylight he showed up on the bottom plot at the bottom of the hill and right here under this tree yesterday morning, or the, two days ago, October 14th, in the morning, right under the tree. And so with that new information, I said, we gotta get in there. I mean, he's in the area, he's, he's, he's hanging out right there still, and let's get in that tree and see if he doesn't show up with this cold front. You hear us talk a lot about it here on Midwest Whitetail. I mean, we love these, high pressure fronts in October. It seems to be the thing that really gets these mature bucks on their feet. I mean, normally mid-October, we're talking about the October lull and we're hunting does and we're not seeing much. And a lot of us here on the, um, on the show had great hunts last night. And obviously me catching up with this big five and a half year old, can't beat that. As far as tools go, trail cameras have to be one of my favorites. It really allows me to be efficient, which is important to me. I've got a real busy home life, busy work life, as a lot of you guys do and being able to study pictures and age deer and um, decide on target bucks, it really helps me focus my efforts in a particular area. And I really can't say enough about uh, the Cuddy Back Cuddy Link system. Even when I hunted public land exclusively, that was probably about 10 years ago, I loved using trail cameras. As my uh, hunting matured to targeting mature bucks, then I wanted to deploy cameras, find deer to target, you know, be able to study pictures, accurately age them. And that's translated now that I own land to just an excellent management tool. And the Cuddy Link system allows you to blanket your farm with multiple cameras, send all the pictures back to one home camera. You can even make that home camera a cellular camera. And you either go in and pull that one card or that cellular camera uh, transmits photos to you. And it's really changed the dynamic about how much you have to pressure your farm and uh, Again, it just makes you more efficient and it's an excellent tool to have. As of this filming, we are less than 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel away from 100,000. And I imagine by Monday we'll have hit our goal 
And I just wanted to express our gratitude and appreciation from all the guys here at Midwest Whitetail for you guys' continued support. We love what we do and work really hard to bring you guys quality content in a creative way. From here on out, the hunting's only going to get better. We've got my favorite time of year, the late October pre-rut, and the weather looks awesome the next 14 days. Good luck to all you guys getting out, and we'll see you guys next week.